What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Philly Garcia here. We got a special guest today. It's my brother, five-time Pro Bowler, three-time NFL All-Pro. He got a Super Bowl in his backyard, respected amongst his peers. This man is a beast, a menace on the field. It's my brother, Jalen Ramsey. Let's get it. My dog. All right, my boy, what are you trying to get here? Yeah, let me get a little edge up. Give me crisp, give me fresh, you know. Okay. Get uh trim trim the edges a little bit. Just light. I wanna kinda keep it dark, but okay. a little light. Make me even, you see I'm not connecting. Okay. Maybe so, you know, let me right. have the sideburns, cut it off right here, and have my little chin, a little mustache, lay it dark, get it off the lip. Okay. Cool. Keep it just okay. Say no more, say no more. So we just recently came back from Nashville. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about uh, where you grew up at, man, and, and the, the city you grew up in. I grew up in a little small town, like right outside of Nashville, um, or two, uh, Antioch, Tennessee. That's where Mookie bets from. Okay. Um, that's kind of how I know Mookie. We played the youth, same youth football uh, organization and stuff. Um, and then I moved to another small town called Smyrna, which is like a country to country when I first had moved there. Uh, I grew up there with, you know, Pop, my brother, mom. And uh, yeah, we used to just grind, get it in, find an open field, grind all the time. That was that was my life, you know what I mean? In all the sports, it was me and my brothers. My mom had two boys, so my pops put us in all the sports, kept us active. Was there a, was there a certain sport that you know you loved, you know, besides football? I loved basketball for a long time. Hooper, I've got to experience your hooping. You know how it is on that court. <laughs> you know, you know a little something, something how it is on that court. Basketball, I loved for a long time, and then um, in high school, my dad actually he was like, "Why don't you uh, stop playing basketball and get in the track a little bit more?" He was like, "They go hand in hand. It'll help you with football, you know." It'll... So then I fell in love with track, man, and track low key. Track low key became like my my sport. Like I was like in love with track. Really? I was in love with track. Um, and then I, I wanted to just continue doing track. So that's when I uh, I became really good at it. One set a bunch of state records, school records that you know still got them records in Tennessee right now to this day. So yeah, then went to from there went to Florida State. Did football and track, and until it was time for me to go to the NFL draft. First and foremost, bro, thank you for having me. Of course. I appreciate you, my brother. Always showing love to me and my family. Um, want a beer? Yeah. Let me open you a beer. Man. Yes, sir. Let's see if I learn how to do this the right way this time. There you go. All right, brother. There you go. Appreciate you, brother. Salute, bro. We ain't gonna tell him about the time me and you had to, um, we had a beer drinking contest and I beat Philly. <laughs> he always wanna bring that up. Why you always wanna bring that up? I just, that's a proud moment for me. That's a proud moment. Before we get into that, February 13th, clock set zero, you're a champion. Yeah. How does that feel? Indescribable still to this moment, like indescribable joy of like everything that I dreamed about has happened like everything that i can control has happened but also um the powers that be or uh and my teammates and um everybody who's god has blessed me to be around like my family teammates situations everything has led me to a moment where um genuinely my my childhood dream has come true so it's like a surreal undescribable moment of of that and a lot of emotions going on you know what i mean yeah um it was amazing that's it was amazing and to finish off on your home turf yeah that's crazy bro i know that's crazy it, it was man it was it was um it was perfect for us perfect scenario per you know, uh, perfect season for us, you know what I mean? Would like, you call it like a Hollywood ending? 
Yeah, yeah 100%. Like, right, right. It was like we manifested that. It was like meant to be. Like, I genuinely, when people ask me, I genuinely describe it as perfect. You know what I mean? And they're right. like, how can you say it's perfect? Y'all didn't have a perfect season, right? No, technically, we didn't have a perfect season when it comes to wins and losses. But even our highs and lows were perfect. Like, the journey to get to where we were was perfect. Like, you could not really, like, that's what you want in a Hollywood movie. Nobody's going to go, okay, let's say that we made that a movie, a movie script. If it was perfect, we didn't have no lows and everybody was healthy and everything was perfect, you probably gonna go to the movie and you're like, okay, cool, but uh, you know, where is the, where is the struggle? Where is, like, it's, like J. Cole says, it's beauty in the struggle. It's, it's beauty in the journey, the highs and the lows. Like that's what makes it special, you know what I mean? So, so I feel like our season was perfect. All the highs and lows, all of it was meant to be. And then for us to end it right there in LA, at home, on our stadium, um, it was all perfect, man. Now talk to me about yesterday, last night, actually, you guys had your ring ceremony. Yep. Tell me about this ring you got and show yeah, off your man. hardware, man, because this thing is dope. Yeah, man. Jason of Beverly Hills, he did this ring. Crazy, man. They, um, Stan Kroenke, the owner, um, in the all the front office, Les and, and Kevin and Tony and, and, and Sean, everybody, they, uh, they really wanted the players to be a part of this ring, right? Um, so a couple of the guys who uh, we have a good relationship with, Jason and Beverly Hills anyway, like he makes a lot of, he makes a lot of jewelry for me and my family. Honestly, he made, made this, I got on, I wear every day. Um, and it's not like any other ring that he's ever done. It's the biggest ring, most diamonds. It's literally SoFi Stadium. It's the stadium that our owner built. Uh, you can look through it, see the jumbo trial and the Oculus. Like the details are crazy. Got the palm trees because that's LA, right? You right. know what I mean? Like that's so LA. You Bro, know. this thing is nuts. So uh, if you can, op different can you open stones, it for, diamonds, for us, different colors. This part, this is special being able to take the top off because this is literally. So you can see that it's the stadium. Of course. Boom! You take the say so you can take the top off and right. you see the field. That's literally the field. Like if you really look and go. See Rams, Bengals, Super Bowl. Like you can, it's our field. Wow. They put. Um, he actually got to get a piece of the turf from the field, mix it with all the paint, and and do this. So like that's actually our our field on there. That's and nice. And in that paint, the football by the by the jumbotron by the big old Oculus is the game football from Super Bowl Sunday. If I look closely. Right here, like I can see myself right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's like me, Cooper Cup, Stafford, A D. We can I can literally see me right, right there, you know what I mean? That's dope, man. So that's special too. Obviously, um anytime I get to represent my family, have my, my, my name on the side. Of course. Love seeing that Ramsey on the side with the with the number five. Um in our team mantra this year was we not me. Man, it's flooded with diamonds. Bro, with diamonds see, right bro. there, 2021. Crazy. Man, it's crazy. it is it's crazy. It's amazing, man. So let's go back, okay? You get class of 2016 draft, right? Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that morning, what you were going through the day of the draft. The day of the draft, I was excited, of course, obviously. Um, not nervous at all, actually, though. Super excited, not nervous at all. Um, not, I wouldn't even really say anxious either. If you can go in the NFL draft and, and somebody, like if somebody would have told me as a, as a five-year-old kid when I started playing football, in years and years and years from now, you'll be a top 10 NFL pick. I'm gonna be, so I'm gonna be completely happy. I'm not, I'm not gonna care. If you would have told me I was gonna be a first round pick, I'm gonna be happy. So me going into the draft, um, knowing that I was gonna be a top 10 pick for sure, I was like, cool, like, yo, my gym, Part of my dream is about to be fulfilled tonight, no matter what. Like, I, I'm, on, I'm on cloud nine. I ain't nervous. I don't really care who I go to. Whatever. I'm cool. Um, and then the second part of me was like, okay, but in these top ten teams, we got <laughs> Chargers, <laughs> right. Cowboys, Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, all these teams could potentially need a, a defensive back. They could potentially need me. So, we got the Chargers here at three. They, they're definitely got they're going to go defense. They're either going to go me or Joey Boza. Or Miles Jack, that was my mindset. Yeah. Um, or or J or Jalen um, Smith at the time. I'm like, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of us for it. They're going they're going defense. Then it was the Cowboys at 
at four. And I'm like, the Cowboys are, you know, they, they had a down year, but they're a pretty good team. Um, so they can really get whoever they want. They probably might go best available on the board. So it's a lot of people who could go in that position. Myself, Zeke, whoever, right? Um, and then Jacksonville, I knew that Jacksonville uh, would potentially take me if I, sl- if I went to five. Um, and then the, the Ravens were at six. So I was like, oh, the That's Ravens crazy, love man. defense. They do. I was like, they probably going to go defense they at do. six. That was, my, that was just right. what I was thinking in my right. head at the time, right? Um, so we get to three, Joey Boza goes three. At the time, I'm like, cool, no, uh, you know, I ain't gotta go worry about that price, the, the taxes out there in LA, I'm, right, right. I, was, I was good with it at the, at the time. When they were in San Diego, I was like, I'm cool with it. Uh, it would have definitely been, been nice to be the first defensive player taken because the first two were quarterbacks, but I'm like, okay, cool. Really wanted to go to the Cowboys. That was my, you know, that was my uh, dream team growing up, you know, America's team. Definitely thought I was going to the Cowboys. I uh, took a pre-draft visit to the to uh, the Cowboys and their facility, and they had even told me, they had told me straight up, like, if you get to four, if the Chargers don't take you, we're taking you. So I'm like, man, I'm going to be good. Like, I'm going to go to the Cowboys. Like, this is going to be dream on top of dream on top of dream. Um, and then they, obviously, they picked, they picked Zeke, which worked out for them as well. And as soon as they picked Zeke, my phone started ringing 904, and I knew it was Jacksonville. So I got drafted by Jacksonville. I was happy, definitely happy. Um, but immediately, I put that chip on my shoulder, like. Of course. You know what I mean? Like Pass up on me. They, I'm, yeah, you start like, thinking I'm not good ten, enough for yeah. you now? I was, okay. like, I was like, okay, I got passed up on by, right. you know, the Chargers. They, wanted to, they went defense, and they went another defensive guy um, who ended up working out for them, too, as well. But I'm like, okay. And then Cowboys, I'm like, dang, y'all did me like that. So I immediately put that chip on my shoulder, and I was ready to get to work. That was, that's honestly how my draft night went. I didn't, uh, so after the draft, I didn't even go out. So I, one thing I do remember about that draft was you had Dion advocating for you. Yeah. What's your relationship with Dion? I mean, that's prime time. He made playing uh, cornerback fun, right? He made playing that position fun. That's a position that I love, obviously, even though I play it a little bit differently. Um, and he did that from when he was at Florida State, when he was on campus at Florida State. Yes, so, sir. Uh, obviously, I ended up going to Florida State as well. Um, and we had a lot of similarities through the years. Like, I was the first defensive, I was the first uh, freshman to start um, at Florida State since Dion, the first freshman defensive back to start at Florida State since Dion. Got a pick in my first game. So, I had really high hopes. I, me, me and Dion had a lot of. A lot of similarities. He was drafted number five overall. I ended up being drafted number five overall. Um, we had a lot of similarities, and we and we built a great relationship. And I and obviously he has sons as well who are a little bit younger than me. Um, he has one older than me, and then and then a couple a little bit younger than me. So uh, I've also built relationships with them and and know them pretty well. And he's been he's been very supportive of me um, throughout my career. And anything that I can support him on as well, I, I'll definitely support him. He's doing some big things at Jackson State. Going back to college, um, was FSU always the move? No, no. I was committed to Southern Cal, USC, for about eight or nine months. Um, I committed to them before my before the start of my senior season in high school, um, and that was the year that we only had like 15 recruits. We were still they were still under sanctions, so the whole class was basically committed. Um, before our senior season. So we all knew each other. Like still to this day, I know all of the guys who we were uh, committed to, to SC together. We had, a, we had a class. I mean, we had a stacked class, all of us committed. And they had a, they had a very tough season that year. They ended up um, losing to Georgia in the Sun Bowl or something like that. And we were, I was at the Army All-American game. I was at the Army All-American game in uh, San Antonio. Yeah. And they had just lost to... I love that game, by yeah, the way. Yeah, love it. I, it was, it was um, I got offered to do all of the All-Star games, but that was one of the most prestigious ones. Right. We were at that game, um, and it was all the best of the best, the who's who's, right, obviously. And, and uh, they had, while we were in San Antonio, they played Georgia Tech and lost in the Sun Bowl. It was a bad year for SC that year. And um, that night, I guess they fired Monty Kiffin, and that was going to be the defensive coordinator. And Monty Kiffin, if you know football, Monty Kiffin is a legend, a legend. I mean, he he built cover two. He 
created a, a whole coverage, basically. Uh, all of his experience, all of his years in the NFL, college, Monty Kiffin is a legend. Um, and that's Lane's dad. And so once they fired Monty Kiffin, you could tell where things were going to go from there. Um, and I remember just getting asked questions by the media and people at the Army All-American came like, what's going to happen with SC? What's going to happen with SC now? Um, like, what's next? My, Lane had to fire his dad. No one, he, you know, that probably came from top down. Is Lane going to be next? Is this and that? It was just so much uncertainty that um, I started to feel uncertain about going all the way across the country. Right. You was just on a flight with me to Nashville. That's a five-hour flight. Right. You know, that's that's tough. That was that would have been tough for my parents to, you know, whatever the case may be. If I needed something right then and there, right. Um, so, I started feeling uncertain. I didn't decommit right away, just because I loved SC. SC was one of my dream schools. SC in Miami was one of uh, my two dream schools growing up. And um, man. I uh, still took my visit at SC. I made it, I made sure it was my last visit. That's all they uh, asked for me. I I told them I wanted to take all five of my official visits because that's something I earned. I ended up switching on signing day. Went to Florida State. Signing day. Signing day. The big switcheroo. Signing huh? day. Nobody knew besides um, I had called. I did call some of the some of the guys from SC who we were all committed together. I remember calling like Chris Hawkins and. And Sue and Leon McQuay, those are the secondary guys. Obviously, I remember calling them and telling them that I was going to switch, and that was tough. Because, you know, I'm a high school kid. I was like 17, 18. That's a big decision, bro. That was tough, right? That was that was tough. So I remember calling them like, man, I can't, I just can't do it, y'all. Like, I, I can't come all the way out there. And it was it was tough, but it was, it was what it was. I had to make the best decision for myself. Um, and I remember calling T. Martin. Um, cause he was my main recruiter at SC that time, at that time. I remember calling T. Martin and he was, he was the same way, like, Jay, come on, like devastated, just, just like I was. Um, and then I didn't call Florida State until that next morning. I'll never forget, I was in the Tar Target parking lot calling, uh, everybody from SC cause I needed to get out of the house. My, my pops was at work, my mom was. She was cool with it. She was like, all right, get out the house for a second. I was in the Target, Target parking lot. I just needed to get out the house for a second. I was in the parking lot calling everybody, just getting some fresh air. Um, and then the next, the next morning, I called, um, I called somebody at Florida State, Coach Pruitt, and I told him first. And I was like, I'm going to switch commitment. I'm going to switch over. I'm going to come to Florida State. I'm going to sign my letter of intent to Florida State this morning. I'll fax it over in a minute. Yada yada yada. I fax it over before I get before I get to school, and then you know I was like, don't tell Jimbo or whoever they'll see it on TV. So Jimbo didn't even know. I, I called Jimbo after like the ceremony. I was like, yeah, I made the switch. It was the best thing for me. Right. You know, like let's get it, let's go. And it worked out. It worked out. Yeah, yeah. Year one national championship. Year two uh, was the first year of the college football playoffs. We Rose Bowl again. Had a flute game against Oregon, whatever. <laughs> uh, Let's go Dutch. Had, had, had a flute game against Oregon. Uh, but what, we went on like a 29, 30 game win streak, something crazy that yeah. nobody's you guys done had a really. Yeah. You guys had a crazy spot. Then the next year, we uh, another New Year's Six game, the Chick-fil-A Bowl in, um, in uh, Atlanta. We ended up losing to a good Houston team, actually. But um, yeah, my Florida State career was amazing. And then obviously ran track there and two and won a couple won a couple ACC uh, gold medals so that was cool too. So we're gonna go back to uh, you're in Jacksonville now you're a Jaguar. Um, we're not gonna get into details of how, but now you're a Ram. You got traded. What's going through your mind? Was there any other teams that you think you were gonna go to? Was it Rams all the way? What, no. What happened? Rams were so unexpected. Whoa, okay. Rams were so unexpected. I um I remember telling Dave and my agent that I wanted to go to, obviously I, I told him I wanted to go to a winning team, a, a team that was going to be a contender. Some specific teams that I kind of told him I really wanted, I liked Baltimore a lot. I liked Baltimore a lot just because they're known for defense, you know what I mean? They're known for having good defenses and I, they're a good good organization. I really liked Baltimore um, and they wanted another corner at the time to pair with Marlon. I really liked um, Kansas City. Obviously, they were a winning team. Um, they had Tyron. 
But the team that I pushed for the most, like the most, I was like, please get me here. Please get me here was uh, at the time the Oakland Raiders that now are Las Vegas Raiders. I I dang near begged to go to the Raiders. I begged to go to the Raiders. Um, and they sent in an offer. They sent in an offer and uh, the Rams just, it wasn't the exact offer that Jacksonville wanted. And the Rams, the Rams came with the, they came, with the yeah. exact offer. I, I remember though, it was a Tuesday, October 15th. It was a Tuesday and uh, my agent called me. I was crazy again. I was leaving Target. I might need to start going to Target. <laughs> Target's where Target's everything Target's where it's at. Right. I was leaving Target, about to go home to have Taco Tuesday. And um, my agent called me and was like, uh, he was like, Baltimore's out. And I was like, wow, what's up? They had just traded, okay. They had just traded with who? The Rams. He was like, so now the Rams might need a corner. He was like, would you be interested in going to the Rams? He was like, it's the Rams. He was like, right now I'm gonna tell you two teams who have put in very similar offers that Jacksonville is really considering are the Rams and the 49ers. And I remember telling my agent, the Rams gonna be better than the 49ers. I'm trying to go to the Rams. Anyway, long story short, it ends up happening. I get traded to the Rams that same year. The 49ers go to the Super Bowl. I was hot. I was right. sick. Right. But they ain't win. Right. And, you know, two years later, I'm with the Rams. We got our ring. So right. it ended up working out uh, exactly how it needed to. But the Rams were like a last minute because they had they had two corners. They had to keep to leave and Marcus Peters. So I'm, I'm thinking in my head, they, they're not going to trade for me. I, I had no clue. Um, but that's that's what it ended up being and once i got to la and found out i remember sean and les told me like yeah we tried to trade for you two weeks ago as soon as you put in a request but jacksonville said that they weren't going to trade you and i was like what so they had already they had already tried i, I had no clue i had no clue that i was even on their radar you got any hobbies that no one knows about i don't know mm. collecting shoes are you uh mm. what, what you know certain things that you kind of I, I definitely have a crazy shoe collection um but that's probably not my that's probably not my thing. I I just buy buy and get shoes just cuz purely I like them, you know what I mean? Like the style. Um Oh, 2K? Stop. Probably cut it. Probably he coldest, thinks he's good. I'm probably the coldest 2K player. He thinks he's good at 2K. Uh, probably the coldest 2K player. You do you know personally that I'm the best Uno player you ever Okay. You've now ever. you're really lying. What else, man? Hey, man you know, as, as you've gotten to know me more, you know, I, I just like, I'm, I'm adventurous. I'll do anything, really, as long as I'm with good people. As right. As long as I'm around my close friends and my fam. Good vibes. And good vibes. Like, I'll do whatever. I'll pick up any hobby. If, if, if all my homies want to go ride bikes, we're just going to go ride bikes. And that's going to be our new thing. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's whatever. Right. Now, that's crazy. And what's cool is uh, I remember you coming out to come hoop with me in South County. And, you know, I thought you were just going to hoop. And then you just started showing some crazy bounce, bro. You started dunking on people. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> What's wrong? They Why you want to dunk better, on everybody? They knew better than to jump with me. Right. Specifically, one kid. We ain't going to name drop. But I he, ain't going to name drop him. I don't know why. After he seen you jump out the gym, he thought he can challenge you at the rim. And, bro, there was a body I, that was left on me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to have a mural in LA right. Fitness. Right. Right. We're going to switch over. We, uh, so what I did is I, I have pulled some questions for the fans to kind of let them, you know, they want to know a little bit more about you. One of the questions that I did see was name your top three places, if you can, or just one in general, places to eat in L.A. that you're just like, bro, I got to have that place. So it's two spots that I really uh, enjoy going to and that I've met the management and owners and stuff there, too. So they always set it up real nice for us is... Um, Boa, Boa in West Hollywood. Boa was great. You were actually taking me there for the first time when we went with the fellas. It was, it was at me, uh, Kyle Pitts, oh, yeah, Micah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brian, Bernie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was dope. Boa, yeah, smacking, bro. Boa, smacking. huge fan of Boa. I gotta take. We gotta go back to Boa because they got a secret menu that I didn't show you that night. Okay. Boa, crazy. Bar um, Barber King don't get those perks yet, but if you with the 
The number one corner in the league. Dude, Maybe dude, we might get the secret soon, menu. Soon come that secret right. menu. Crazy. As an ultra competitor, mm -hmm. who's someone you like to compete against who maybe doesn't get enough recognition and then someone who does that you like to compete against? This is always tough, so I'm going to just try to name one. Yeah, I'm yeah. Name, I'm and name, without disrespect to name, any of the guys. No, yet. no, no, no. Yeah. That's a lot of good guys. This is the NFL. Right. It's a lot of good guys. Right. Obviously, a guy who I have just a ton of respect for and I've played more than any other receiver that I've ever played in my career is DeAndre Hopkins. I played him twice when I was in Jacksonville every year. I played him, then he got traded out here to Arizona, so I started playing him twice again. I played him more than I played any other receiver. So I've guarded him more than any other receiver. Ton of respect for him, and I enjoy those matchups because there's always, I have to perform well. I have to be on my A game. I gotta come with, like, I gotta Cross come your teeth, with. Cross your dot your eyes, make sure you're locked in. 100%, because he, yeah. he a beast. Okay. Um, I love that. And it's, it's like, I could, I can have him. Uh, covered pretty well, to, even to my standards, he can still make a catch because of his range and his uh, strong hands and just he, he's he's good. So I have a lot of respect for him. That's one guy who um, he does get the respect that he deserves. I feel like um, I, 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 I see him getting pumped up and stuff. So so I, he should get get that respect. Um, a guy who I've played who does not get enough respect as he deserves. I'm honestly gonna have to say Tyler Lockett. When I when when we play the Seahawks, I'm, I'm usually guarding uh, DK majority of the game, but there are specific times where coaches like, no, we need you on Lockett, and people don't realize that. And Lockett is always sneaky, having thousand yard years and multiple touchdown games and 150 yard games and crazy games. I think Lockett in his career has been very good, but very slept on throughout his career. Um, and that's another guy who, I, who I've who i guarded personally, who I think is, who does not, that's one of the guys who does not get the respect that he deserves, who is who is better than advertised, put it that way. Now back to the uh, division. Um, now that Russ is in Denver, and it looks like Jimmy's probably most likely gonna be traded at some point, or not, who knows. Um, he won't be playing, but no. what it seems like it seems like you guys are about to get a hold of the division, and Arizona is probably going to be the one-two with you guys. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that going forward? Do you guys, do you kind of like that situation? Do you like it where it's like everybody's kind of like a dog on there? Or do you, I mean? Yeah, man, I man, I, mean, I embrace whatever challenge that may come my way, but um, if that's if that's going to be the case, it's going to be us against Arizona to to win our division. Then we're going to duke it out, and we're going we're going hopefully come out on top again um you know like we have in the, in, in these previous couple of years um that i've been with la so uh we're gonna try to build off that and, and hopefully that's the case but man san fran has always given us little problems here and there for some reason um and we finally got over that hump to in the nfc championship game to be able to get to the super bowl and now they're gonna have a different quarterback so it'll be a different little team a little bit um but I'm still excited about that. And then, yeah, the Seahawks, I mean, they're going to figure out who they're going to roll with, whether it's Geno or whoever else. Um, but division games are always tough just because there's so much familiarity. You know what I mean? Everybody knows each other. Everybody guards each other. I guard these guys two two times a year. They get my tendencies down. I get their tendencies down, the O-line, the D-line, every, everything, right? Um, so I'm, I'm still excited for those games as well. Like, I'm excited. I get excited for other, you know how I am, I get excited for other people when, when certain things uh, come up. So, like, I'm ex I'm still excited, even though they don't have Russ anymore, Seahawks, like, I'm still excited for the, the Seattle games that we'll have of because of Bobby Wagner now. Yeah. It's like, yo, we got Bobby Wagner. So now Crazy. every Seahawks game we is a revenge up, game. You didn't bring up Wags. Right. So, like, every every Seahawks game now is a revenge game for Bobby. So we all going, as a team, like, that's that we'll rally behind that. We're going to be like, oh, we going to come with it. This game, cause of Bobby, like we're gonna make sure his revenge game is insane. Like that's that's that, that's like my mindset. Like, right. yo, I'm gonna make sure my dog have a crazy revenge game. Right. So that's um. So I'm still so you know really I'm still excited for all of our division games. Now that you have um, Aaron Donald, who's an anchor, right? Mm -hmm. You have Wags who's playing the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. And then you, you just, you know, running with the secondary and, you know, coaching those guys up to, you know, your best ability. Um, what do you see your guys doing defensively this year and back and WAGs fitting into that mm -hmm. situation? I think this might be 
this has potential. Let me say that this has potential to be uh, the best defense I've been a part of. The best defense I've been, a part of. and I've been a part of many great defenses in my NFL career, in my short career. I've been a part of three number one defenses in in six years. Wow. Two in Jacksonville. Two times we were ranked the number one defense. I think one time we were ranked third or something. And then uh, my second year in LA, we were ranked the number one defense. Um, Last year, our defense, I don't really care what we was ranked because we did enough to win the Super Bowl. Right. So I've been a part of really good defenses like in my career. Um, defenses who had pro bowlers, all pros. Uh, obviously, here in L.A., defenses who have the GOAT, um, the best defensive player to ever play the game, Aaron Donald. And then you have B-Wag. So just like us three combined have more all pros and pro bowls than probably 10 teams in the league probably. Crazy. So, um, being a part of something like that is super special. I always like to surround myself with, with other people who are doing big things and um, trying to continue to do big things and push themselves forward. Who is the best dress on the team? Yours truly. And why? It's just so effortless. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay. It's just so effortless what I put on and how I put it on and what I put it on with. and. Just my how I'm kicking my flavor and my drip and my swag. It's a, my 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 vibe, my my aura is just different than than everybody else. You know what I mean? Right. And I do it with no stylists. Like don't nobody style me. Don't nobody put my clothes on. Don't nobody pick my clothes out. Don't nobody shop for me. Don't nobody even iron my clothes. I it's me. Even even like even when I come up with something like yo, I'm gonna I'm go crazy. I'm gonna wear a mariachi fit. That's that was me. Nuts. Like that was me. That was like I came up with that idea. You know what I mean? And then I talked to everybody who I needed to talk to within the Rams organization and they like, yeah, we can make it happen. But like, that's me. You know what I mean? So that's why I say like creative, like it's the creativity. I'm doing it with no help. Like no, when I say no help, like a stylist, like, you know, they pick out the clothes. They, they come up with the creative behind right. all this stuff. Like, nah, I'm doing all that for, my, for myself. Um, and then obviously I just do it based off, I also do it based off of comfort a lot of times as well. Like, yo, what am I comfortable in? What am I, what do I feel like doing? So um, that's why I say me, um, but other guys can dress as well. A lot of, we in LA, so a lot of these guys have stylists. So right. that's cheating a little bit. Like, you know, there might be guys who got some <laughs> amazing fits that they put on week after week after week. Right. And it's like, okay. But I know so and so styled that for right. you. Like I know, I know they it. put, I and that's their domain. Right. Yeah, like and that's their domain. So obviously it's gonna look good. So I take, I deduct points for for having a stylist. Who's uh -huh. the worst dress? The worst dress <laughs> on the team. Who's the Terrell team? Burgess. <laughs> TB. Terrell Burgess Terrell is Burgess. the worst dress on the team because, <laughs> and, and 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 it's just because we mess with him because we got high hopes for him. Right. <laughs> he, 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 he doesn't meet them. He don't meet the hopes. <laughs> he don't meet the hopes. That's funny. What's, what's your favorite movie? Your favorite movie? Yeah. And then on top of that, who's your favorite actor? It doesn't have to be in that movie, but who's your favorite actor yeah. and what's your favorite movie? It's tough, but my favorite movie is Life. Um, Everybody love Life. So it's not, it, it might not, if you're watching, it's not Life. Um, the new life movie that came out that was like the aliens, not that life. I ain't talking about that life. No, we're talking about we the boom boom room. We talking about the boom boom the room. Boom, life. Boom, boom, boom. Come on now, we talking about. Right. If you don't know about life, go look up life. Right. Classic. You gotta see life. Uh, Martin Lawrence. I can cut on life and and let it flow and and be laughing and actually watching it the whole time. That's why it's my favorite movie right. for sure. Um, but my but my favorite actor. Is actually Will Smith. You ever meet Will? Will Smith's my favorite actor. No. No. Mm -mm. Will going through his own things right now. Yes, he is. He's going through his own little things right now. Yes, but he is. Will's He's my a, favorite. Will is 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 highly respected as, yeah. as in the acting world. One hundred percent. He my he's he's my favorite actor. His 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 range is crazy. If it wasn't the man was or, Ali. Bro, that I was say good. Will my favorite actor. Really, you want to know? I say he's my favorite actor because Will has made me. This is pause. Will has Will has Will has made me watch a movie and feel every different reaction from different movies that he's played. Like I watch Ali and I'm like, man, I feel inspired. I watch 
Um, I watched Seven Pounds in Pursuit of Happiness, and I'm like, Have you seen crying. Focus? Have you seen Focus? I see Focus, and I'm focus like, I'm finna go. Right, like, uh, I was it uh, the the one he did with about the sisters, uh, Venus and Serena. King Richard is King is. Richard. I'll take it back. King Richard, my favorite movie ever. King, King Richard, Richard, fire. Great. King Richard, especially when King you have, Richard, so especially when you fire. I can see how you can relate to that because you you have you know the yeah. girls right. King and, Richard, so fire. Right, that's a great. King movie. King Richard is my favorite movie now. I take that back. I say life because I it's, it's in my brain. I always say life since I was like a little, since I first saw life. It's been my favorite movie since then, and King Richard just came out this past like last the last year. But that is my new favorite movie. King Richard is my new favorite movie, and Will Smith is my favorite actor. His, his range is crazy. This is the last question I'm gonna ask you, Jalen, my brother, JR. Um, I know you looked at the schedule. Mm. Which game do you have circled, and why? Mm. Let's go out of the division. Out of the division? I have a feeling you're about to say my Cowboys, bro. Uh, I'm not this time. Okay. Not this time. I have something special brewing for that Cowboys game, though, y'all stay tuned. All right. Um, you heard that? I do get I do get very excited anytime I get to play the Cowboys. Though. I'm not gonna lie, I do. Uh, but I also get very excited when I have an opportunity to play Tom Brady. That's always one that I'm like, yes, I get to play Tom Brady again. He is again. obviously the goat, right? Um, and that cha that challenge and wanting to intercept Tom Brady or make a good play against Tom Brady, like that's always something that's like, yo, I need that fit. Like I I, that, I want that rush, right? Um, so. That's always a game, um, but maybe, just maybe, this year it might be the Broncos because it's Christmas Day, and I've never played a game on any holiday, and we're playing at, besides Martin Luther King Day last year, but like on Christmas, like Christmas is my, you know, Christmas is my favorite holiday. Yeah, same. So... We have a Christmas Day game, so that's probably the one I'm like, dang, Christmas Day game? Like, I ain't never, like, usually Christmas Day, I'm at home watching the Lakers play. Right. Or, or whoever play on, on TV. Right. But I'm going to be actually playing a game on Christmas Day. I'm like, that's probably the one I got circled just solely for that reason, not because of the opponent or even though it's, it's going to also be a good game. It's Russ now with the, with the Denver Broncos. And my uh, former defensive back coach is, the, is now Denver's defensive coordinator, so it's going to be good. Speaking of Russ, uh, Lakers. We think about the, the Lakers other this Russ. Year. The other Russ. The other Russ. Yeah. Speaking of the other Russ. Um, what are the Lakers' chances? Um, I like them to have a bounce back year. Yeah. I like Russ to go crazy this year. So prove some people wrong. What? Prove a lot of people. I'm wrong. a huge Russ fan. I'm a huge Russ fan. And that and that's for sure off camera too. You 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 I'm, really you know that. say that, yeah. I am a huge Russ fan. People do not understand how hard it is to play with that much passion and that much heart. And he does it for 82 games a year. We only play fifth we only play 17 guaranteed, and then obviously we have the playoffs. But some games, it's tough to play with that same. Our first game, it's easy to go out there. We're going to be pumped up for our first game, especially when it's a night game. It's easy to go out there, be pumped up, ready, give it to all. Them uh, 1 o'clock games that are not televised on a major channel, that are not against a good team, those are games that are harder to get up for. Russ will go out there on a random Tuesday against um, – who was the worst team in the league this year? Maybe the Pistons. I don't know. Orlando. Russell go out there on a random Tuesday against the Detroit Pistons and, and give you a triple-double. Like, what are you even playing for? Ain't nobody even watching this game, Russ. He you definitely. Can just drop 20 and, you can just drop 20 and 10 and we're going to be cool. He definitely lacks no effort, bro. You know how hard it is to do that every, consistently, though? Right. Like, it's hard for me to not respect a, that. Yeah, he has a moment. Like, as an athlete, as a competitor, I, I got to respect that. Right. Doing that at a high level, right. that's right. crazy. Right. What we like to do here on this podcast is we like to ask people about their fighting spirit, and that's something we do on Modelo because we really channel into that. At what point in your life did you feel like you tapped in and really channeled your fighting spirit? As a as an athlete, um, when when you have to tap into that fighting spirit, it's it's either a, a couple times. It's it's when you're in the heat of a battle, a tough battle, right? Or um, 
that could be in life or in the actual game or whatever. And so for me, it has been um, when I've gotten injured in my life. Um, so like the very first time was when I was a sophomore in high school and very promising, very athletic young kid, and very promising, hopefully to have like a, a really good high school career and do great things. And then I um, got hurt, had to have knee surgery, had to sit out for the whole year, couldn't play football, basketball, run track, couldn't do anything. And uh, just tapping into that fighting spirit mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, in all aspects of my life to make sure I had an extremely good junior year and senior year to be able to set up myself for college and then life and then go from there. I would probably point to that moment. It was when I had to have knee surgery in high school, that first time I got injured because now um, and that and, and really me tapping into that fighting spirit has led me in my mindset to be so much greater now in life because when I get injured now or I've had little minor surgeries or even a major surgery now as I'm older just that that fighting spirit that's in my mind that I that I built when I was a sophomore in high school has has carried over so it's been so much easier for me do you have anything you want to plug here? Any, any, any shout outs you want to do, my boy? Anything new coming, you know, coming your way uh, soon that you want to kind of throw a plug in? Um, no, I just want to give a, give a huge shout out to my brother, Philly, the Barber King, the man that changes lives and saves lives. And my brother, I always keep God first. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ for everything. And um, we just going to keep being blessed, brother. Well, cheers to that, brother. Yes, sir. God bless. Salute.